And now a little history lesson for you. A generation ago, the Chesapeake Bay was abundant with seafood, and the waterman's working boat during the winter was the skipjack, which was used to haul in oysters. But slowly, the bay grew tired, and as the abundance of food disappeared, so did the skipjacks. Then, in 1993, our next guest, Dr. Randolph George, bought an aging skipjack named Martha Lewis. He chronicled his restoration adventure in his new book, Memoir of a Skipjack. Dr. George, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Did I get that right? You did. It's a lot of information. <laughs> it is. What made you want to do this? You said that you're a medical doctor and you just got inspired by these vessels. Well, I lived for a, a good while in Baltimore. I grew attached to the Chesapeake Bay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it has to do with uh, love of place, mm -hmm. um, but also the water. Mm -hmm. And part of the part of my drive was was history. Yeah. I love history. So we we put this together and we've got uh, the perfect example yes. of, of saving uh, Chesapeake Bay history in the skipjack. I decided, uh, with the help of my brother-in-law, mm -hmm. to save one because mm -hmm. I knew they were fading away. Yes. And, and and we just saw a picture of that one skipjack that was just online, and that skipjack is one of the remaining we, skipjacks. I went that. around and, and uh, w to find every skipjack. Yeah. That was the intention, and they're all in the book. Mm -hmm. um, in every state of, of repair or disrepair, mm -hmm. the earlier pictures that you've seen are, are of uh, boats that have died. Wow. They have been pushed up into the marsh as their, as their time went by, oh. as the economics of oystering died out. And then later on are some a few of the of the ones oh, that we found this that were is one of them that, died that we then, huh? yes yikes and the um, the boats that are surviving are kept together by very dedicated people who love history do not want something precious to to disappear mm -hmm. and there are a lot of them out there mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people out there but not so many skipjacks anymore so when we surveyed uh, something like 52 skipjacks total about 41 of them or so were still floating. Mm. Uh, at the time, um, but many of them were, were in disrepair. So what did you learn about the history of skipjacks as you went through this renovation I, process, or restoration process? After, after finding all of the skipjacks and getting stories from each of them, mm -hmm. I went to the place where Martha Lewis was born. Okay. And it was at the south end of Dorchester County in a little town called Wingate. And I started meeting the people, mm -hmm. the people that had uh, built her or their descendants. And then I went to visit every uh, captain who had ever sailed on Martha Lewis. And I got their stories and put them in the book, uh, recorded them. And um, they are fascinating stories. They are um, rich with the lore, the history of, of uh, the Chesapeake. So as you were going around and doing your research, what, was there something that struck you that you didn't expect or something that surprised you? Um, I was surprised by the, I suppose by the people. Yeah. by the dedication, by their hard working, their, their, their ability to adapt, uh, to make a living, scrape, literally, scrape a living from the bottom of the Chesapeake Bay. Mm -hmm. And it's a story that goes all the way back to the 1880s when the first skipjacks were built. Mm -hmm. They're, they were built for a reason. They were built because the bay is shallow. So they were a shallow boat. Uh -huh. uh, and they were also um, like tractors. They had to draw these oysters out of the mud, out off of the rocks, with great power, and so they had to have huge sails. They were they were a power machine in their day, mm -hmm. and because of the rake that they used, uh, they were very efficient. And the um, the state and the laws had to be changed to slow them down. Mm -hmm. They were they were so effective at wow. uh, bringing up oysters. And now you've got your Martha Lewis. How does that feel? It's all restored. It is. Uh, it, it took a long time. It was done during one of the worst winters we've had ever since, and uh, with ice and snow through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, but we took apart the boat, and uh, probably a third of it was mm -hmm. replaced. That is amazing. The, and if people want to read more, and they should, they can go to memoiraofaskipjack.com. But they can also go to area booksellers and Amazon. Very yes, easy piece. Uh, any of the online bookstores have them. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. A <laughs> lot of history that you captured. There's Just much, amazing. Much we'll be right back with more Midday Maryland <laughs> right after the break. Stay tuned.